So today is another fantastic day of events, and and um, we'd like to I'd like to stay you all to stay tuned until the end of the closing ceremonies to hear who won the pitch competition and how the money was distributed. So with that, I'd like to now invite from the Queen's Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science, Josh Marshall. So Josh will be wrapping up by speaking about Queen's Ingenuity Labs, which is the faculty's research institute for applying AI ML using robotics and human machine interaction. Hi, gang. I've got some slides to share. If we can put my slides up, that'd be great. All right. So thanks for having me uh, on behalf of uh, fac the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science here at Queen's University. I hope everybody's had a great weekend conference uh, and that you've you've found some entertaining, found it entertaining, enlightening. Uh, you, you've met some new people. You've shared some new ideas. Uh, certainly, that last talk was was <laughs> super cool. Um, and that you take what you learned and and the new relationships that you've you fostered and you move forward with those in your career. So um, in the few minutes that I have with you, I, I just want to share some information about uh, a new and exciting uh, research initiative that's happening here at Queen's, which we call the Ingenuity Labs Research Institute. Um, and if you're thinking at all about graduate studies uh, in applied AI or robotics, uh, you'll want to you'll want to check it. So um, just briefly, so Ingenuity Labs is, is an interdisciplinary research in initiative. We've got uh, faculty members from uh, multiple faculties, so arts and science, engineering, uh, from computing to through to law. Um, and we focus on the design and use of intelligent systems in these veins, uh, as well as robotic machines to enhance human productivity, creativity, safety, and quality of life. That's sort of our tagline. Um, so we're really where AI and robotics meet. Um, just, you know, where did we get started? We're about two years old now. We just we're, we just uh, opened up recently. Uh, we, we started on the basis of a pretty large uh, gift from one of our alumnus. So Dr. Bruce Mitchell uh, donated $16 million to help us get started. Um, we've got a brand new state-of-the-art building uh, with a whole bunch of new facilities. And that bears his name. Uh, it's called Mitchell Hall. So for those who are at Queens, uh, that's Mitchell Hall. Uh, just a little bit about us. We've, we've hired five new junior faculty members in the areas of AI and robotics, and we call these faculty members Mitchell professors, and they were just named and announced recently. Each of them has a pile of money. They're looking for keen new graduate students. Um, they can spend that money on equipment, new students, and, and we're about to announce a really high profile uh, senior research chair. Um, unfortunately, the individual's name is still a bit top secret, so I can't tell you much more about that, but that'll come uh, be announced soon. Uh, our total faculty complement is around 22 researchers, so we have two uh, professors from a whole bunch of disciplines across the campus spanning all the AI and robotics subfields, um, and those faculty members currently supervise more than 80 graduate students. So um, if you're at Queen's, you might recognize some of these faces. This is just a few of them, um, and I, so I think some of, some of you might know some of those people uh, spanning, again, those areas from AI to robotics and a whole bunch of applications therein. I mentioned that we have some brand new facilities. Uh, we've got more than 12,000 square feet of, of new big open research space, sort of at the top couple of floors of Mitchell Hall, uh, where we run uh, robots and human machine interaction experiments. Uh, we also meet up there for big talks. We had uh, Microsoft, Amazon Robotics there this year, among a whole bunch of other exciting uh, guests. And we're looking forward to others in the coming year. Um, we have a start, also have a state-of-the-art uh, computing cluster that's hosted by the Center for Advanced Computing at Queen's. So for all of our AI researchers, they have access to some pretty high-end computing. Um, here are some of our new sponsors. We've got a whole bunch of old ones that we're continuing, but we've got a few interesting new ones. Um, and we're growing that list of industry, agency, and government partners uh, by the week almost. So um, that was my really quick intro to Ingenuity Labs. Thanks for, for the opportunity to tell you about us. I hope you've had a, a really fantastic conference experience. Um, if you're interested in connecting more, maybe learning a bit about how to up your game in AI and robotics through graduate studies, you can uh, feel free to get in touch with me. Cheers. Okay, thanks a ton, Josh. Uh, that was a, a great little piece of information for us. So it's really cool to hear about all that interesting work at Ingenuity Labs. Um, so I'm for sure that all of you have been probably on the edge of your seat since the pitch competition about the results of the event. So it would be a perfect time to welcome all of our judges back to the stage to deliver the, the results of their deliberations and announce the prize pool and how it will be distributed like among our competitors. Um, so in, of course, for each, uh, for each presentation, we will give a constructive feedback from one of the, ju ju the judges. So here's Sh David, Shingai, Dan, and Emily to share their results.
Hello, hello. Thank you to the co-chairs for this awesome event. Um, I won't speak for all the judges, but I know I had a blast understanding more about the, the teams and understanding more about the initiatives. So we decided as a team that not only is the prize money going to be divvied up, but we're also going to allocate some of our time and energy and put them back into these initiatives, which is fantastic. So without further ado, I'm going to announce the third place, um, the third place prize uh, winner, I guess you should say, which is Otis. And I was very impressed with their initiative of understanding the kinetics and the integrated tech for baseball swing. I think there's massive upside potential to that, to that program. And I'm happy to allocate three sessions with their team to help them further understand, you know, sensor integration with sport and athlete. And given what my company's doing with machine learning for tracking people movement, I think I'd be a, a valuable resource. So Otis, feel free to uh, work with Max and Berkeley, and then we can connect after this, but congratulations. <laughs> congratulations to Otis. That is fantastic effort. In fact, I'll start by saying congratulations to all the teams. Um, we're all uh, among the judges, startup people as well. So we completely get it and we completely get how hard it is, the blood, sweat and tears that goes into building a business. So congratulations to all of you. Um, I'm going to announce the second place position, which uh, we are giving to Pursuit Labs. And uh, we're excited to do that because they're, the problem they're solving is so pertinent right now. I mean, we've seen with the layoffs and all the different changes in the, the workforce, and we know that technology is going to affect the future of work in so many different ways that we believe that the problem they're trying to solve and the technology they have has legs. So uh, I'm also contributing my time. Emily and I will be uh, assisting um, uh, Pursuit Labs to take this further. Um, I'll be sharing some of the research that I've done through my company, Fireside Analytics, through um, you know, what does it take to create an AI professional and can we codify that some way using your uh, product and your uh, uh, organization, the work that you've done so far. So congratulations to Pursuit Labs. You are coming in at number two. You will walk away with something and you will walk away with time from Emily and I. And uh, to echo Shingei's comments and from the rest of the judges, uh, we were swept away by the quality of the uh, the pitches, of the uh, the dedication of the groups. All this is uh, in addition to you getting your degrees. I mean, uh, that's your your, your first time, uh, your, your full time job is uh, coming out with a degree, uh, and you most of all, you know, working from home have faced challenges that I can't even imagine what it would be like to try and learn through Zoom all day long. So, uh, extra kudos to uh, to the students here who've organize this entire conference, uh, develop businesses and solutions on the side, pitch them to us while doing a degree. I mean, that's that's like three full-time jobs. Um, I'm just like creating a really long drum roll here. So, uh, <laughs> drum rolls. Oh, it's coming in my ear. Nuts. So that tech. There's a drum roll in my, uh, my ears right now. Just imagine it. Okay, first place goes to Growbot. Um, Growbot, with your technology, um, enabled to eliminate or reduce waste uh, at, at, uh, with, uh, for grocery stores or beyond, uh, is something that clearly scales. And because the type of data uh, is uh, not medical or whatnot, it's easy to access be because it's so uniform in a way, it's all inventory stuff. Because it exists across grocery stores everywhere, there's a lot of grocery stores. Um, we see your technology as something that can scale, scale fast, scale big, um, and uh, and have a huge impact, not just uh, at a local level, but for even the logistics side of things for how uh, vegetables and produce and everything gets from supply point A to B. Um, so I, I can't wait to dig in with you personally. Uh, yes, you'll get some prize money, uh, but um, I'm more excited with about working with you um, we have some customers up our sleeves that have actually, uh, big ones who have actually expressed interest in doing exactly what you're talking about uh, with grocery stores um, in the Canadian subarctic. So um, as part of our follow-on sessions, A, we're going to make sure that you deploy those funds to build a proof of concept that you're going to pitch to us and show that it works within some timeline that we agree on. And B, then we're going to introduce you to some big major time customers and see if you can start solving their problem. Sound good? All right. Again, congratulations, everyone. We are. I'm already excited for next year's Kukai. So uh, keep it up, everyone, and uh, have a good year. Yeah. If I could just add one thing, um, just want to say congrats again to all the teams who pitched. They were all really incredible. Um, and I just want to offer up um, anyone that's. I went through the Quixie program uh, a couple of years ago for, through Queens. So if there's any teams who are interested in 
um, you know, learning about, the, about that program. Um, I'm open up to anyone. So I'll just connect with Max and Berkeley. And if anyone wants to reach out to me just to talk about that program or anything else in like, I guess, starting a business as a student, I'm open to chatting. So congrats again. Awesome. Um, yeah, thanks so much uh, to all of you for being judges at this year's pitch competition. Uh, you all did an awesome job. I was blown away by the, the feedback you were giving the teams and, and what I heard in the deliberations. Uh, and like I mentioned, I'll be sending out an email either tomorrow or on Tuesday to introduce you like via email to personally to all the uh, competing team members uh, so you can get in touch with them. I'm really like glad that you all want to follow up with them. That's really inspiring to see happen. So uh, that's phenomenal. Um, thank you all for your time and effort that you've dedicated to this event today. It's the first time we've ever done a pitch competition with a, like a prize pool, this Dragon's Den style uh, distribution of prize money like this. And I, I think it worked out quite well. So thank you all for being a part of this. Uh, it was really great to see you all um, helping us make this event happen and to all the teams for their wonderful pitches that we just got to enjoy uh, over an hour ago. Okay, uh, so to all student group partners in the audience and all undergraduate students in general, um, although the space of undergraduate AI startups is a pretty niche space, Hopefully some of you have been pretty inspired by what you've just seen in the pitch competition. Um, and we might even be able to see pitch uh, co competing teams from across Canada and beyond next year. I think that'd be really cool to see. And the same goes for the conference as a whole. Um, we at QKI are constantly trying to expand uh, the conference and involve more students, industry representative, uh, speakers, sponsors from across the country. Uh, so please spread the word, encourage your friends, your colleagues to participate in future years, and generally uh, help us make QKI the national conference that we're adamantly working towards. Um, now there's a group of people that honestly need more recognition than we could possibly fit into this closing ceremony, but we'll try our best. So this year's QKI coordinator team consists of some of the hardest working, most detail oriented, uh, ambitious and wonderful people I've ever had the pleasure of working with. This team consisting of only seven members um, is responsible for organizing all of the backstage logistics for Hopin, managing our marketing and branding, building and maintaining our conference website and social media channels, handling outreach to delegates and student group partners across Canada and beyond, and all around helping deliver an absolutely outstanding conference this weekend through their unbelievably hard work over the past 10 months. Yeah, so I'd, uh, I definitely second that. And beginning with the logistics team, I'd like to bring up our three members, Kathy Wu, our logistics website, manager, media and, channels, handling outreach to delegates and uh, Jack Rebentz, and we'll see it, our two and all around helping deliver logistics coordinators. Um, so the whole year they were working on the transition to the conference to an online format from also like possibly exploring hybrid in person and online um, at the beginning of the summer to of course the full transition to the hop in platform. And this was a very difficult transition, but we learned a lot and I think so did everyone in this in this strange time. Um, and it also was particularly hard when it comes to staying motivated after realizing the conference wouldn't take place in person. It's obviously quite some adversity to overcome. But these three did an exceptional job of keeping their heads up, adapting to all the conference events, to the online format, and deciding exactly how to make the most of the Hopin platform to provide the best QKI 21 experience. So thank you all for that. All right. And next up, uh, we have our marketing team composed of graphic designer Katie Liu and web developer Parker Rowe. Um, I, I give them those titles, even though they both do way more <laughs> than just graphic design and web, uh, web development each. Uh, so I, I, if I listed all their, their the work they've done in uh, this conference, I'd be up here for quite a while. Um, but yeah, over the summer, these two uh, completely overhauled our branding guidelines for QKI this year. They built our QKI 2021 website from scratch. They handled all their social media posting and designed all the wonderful graphics that we've seen throughout the year, which uh, in my opinion are some of the most undeniably jaw-droppingly beautiful and professional graphics that I could have imagined being created by undergraduate students. So I was blown away by that and I hope anyone who's been on our uh, social media channels or seen any of the uh, graphics used today uh, or yesterday uh, on Hopin um, would agree with me on that front. And frankly, they did so much more behind the scenes to create the face of QKI that you're all familiar with today. Um, so a huge thank you to Katie and Parker uh, for being the most killer marketing coordinators we could ask for. Yeah, absolutely. So finally, I'd like to introduce our delegates team. So that's Ellie Meltreader and Jack Perry. So Ellie did a great job this year with organizing our student partner group outreach, delegate outreach, and uh, Jack handled the ticket sales. So our delegates team is the reason why we have so much representation from across Canada and beyond this year with some of our friends from the States coming. And uh, they were responsible for building out the student partnership group and the tiered program that we developed and allowed us to partner with Western, U of T, 
uh, Pomona College, Carleton AI Society, and the McGill AI Society today. So uh, thank you for that. And they really allowed us to become that national conference that we were really working towards. Um, and lastly, I'd like to thank the KID, the QMine Queen's AI Hub uh, Managing Director of Operations, who's worked super hard with us the entire way to put on QKI. And the time and effort that the kids dedicated to working behind the scenes to make QKI success is unbelievable. So it was great to have so much support from him. And on behalf of all of QMine this year, uh, thank you. Uh, and once again, uh, just before we leave, I, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Um, firstly, our title sponsor, the Queen's Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science. Um, our two gold sponsors, TELUS and Northeastern uh, University of Toronto. Um, and our silver sponsors, Google Cloud, WeTrack, the Vector Institute, DDQIC, Build AI, and Canaxis, along with our partnerships with Hopin and Mosey that we mentioned before. Uh, and as mentioned in our delegates package and for ticket sales, half of your ticket price will be donated to charity. So this means that nearly $2,500 will be donated to the international charity AI for Good, which obviously lines up pretty well with our conflicts theme this year, um, as a result of your attendance. So AI for Good is helping improve the world by their four pillars, which are, are pillars, sorry, which are data access, AI solutions designed by their teams, education, and then drafting government policies to achieve the sustainable development goals or SDGs. Um, they are partnered with and working with the UN, some of the top universities in the world, and corporations such as Amazon and IBM. If you'd like to learn more about their organization, please check out their website at AI4, and that's the, le the, the number for good.org, AI for good.org. Uh, so before my final closing remarks, I'd also like to announce the sweater giveaway winners um, from David Hayes talk. Benjamin Hugh asked, how do you balance the ide idealism with innovation and what decides what truly limits how unrealistic you can imagine in order to build an achievable product and not waste your time on something that is unattainable? So that was an interesting question. And for the women in AI panel, Yasmin asked, how have you dealt with imposter syndrome when progressing through the tech industry, especially in leadership? And from Siobhan's talk, Ani asked how useful slash transferable in, is research that has been done on non-invasive BCIs to the work being done at Neuralink. So all those elicited very interesting dialogue from our uh, from our speakers. So if you could, the three of you, please. Oh, sorry. And also, big shout out to Henry Lee for great participation throughout both days. So you also get a, a sweater giveaway as well. So if you could all please uh, email your mailing address and your sweater size to chair at qkai.ca. Um, and to wrap up our phenomenal two days of events, I'd like to leave you with some closing thoughts. I hope that you've learned that there's a place for everyone in the world of AI and that anything is possible. And I hope that you've had ample opportunity to network and speak with others that you normally may not have. And uh, even in this new and often unfavorable online space. So that in itself is something to be proud of. However, it is great to see that even in the online format, we've had this incredible amount of engagement. And remember that also, this can continue until 5.30 because the bonus networking time will be available in the speed networking tab and the one-on-one -on -one coffee chats that can be booked in that tab. So thank you all very much for all of your amazing work, and I hope to see you all next year at QKI 2022.